dive into the differences between rest and soap web services. Absolutely. Let's make it fun and easy to understand like your 10. Yay. This is like someone taking rest while soap is the bar you use to wash hands. Oh, is it? Of course not. Let's start with the basics. Soap and rest are like two different languages web service speak to communicate to each other. Rest or representational state transfer is an architecture which is more like sending a postcard. It is lightweight and straightforward. Soap or simple object access protocol is like sending a letter in an envelope. It's structured, secure but a bit heavy. I see. So soap is like the formal dinner invitation. Why rest is like a quick text message. Exactly. Now let's talk history. Soap was introduced by W3C in the early 2000s to handle limitation in web service like complex data structures and security dark time. Soap sounds like the strict teacher in class. <laughs> you got it. On the other hand, rest was introduced by Roy Fielding as a response to soap's complexity. Rest is simpler to implement and uses standard HTTP commands. Can we dive deeper on the differences between REST and SOAP? Let's understand it by taking fun example. Consider SOAP as fancy restaurant of Gordon Ramsay, who is a popular chef, while REST as a street food of famous Delhi Vada Pav girl. Statefulness SOAP is like a fancy restaurant of Gordon Ramsay that can remember customer previous order if needed. But by default, it does not. Because of this, it needs more resources and limits the scalability. REST, on other hand, is like a street food vendor that treats every customer like a new one. Viral Vada Pav girl, by the way, does not remember your last visit, making it stateless. This way, she needs less resources. Performance Soap is like a five course meal. It's heavy and takes time to prepare. REST is like that Vada Pav, quick, light, and efficient. Design so follows a strict recipe, like a gourmet chef. There are rules and protocols to follow. Otherwise, Gordon Ramsay will get angry. What? Look at the color of it. Well, I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. What is it? It's overcooked. And throw you out of the kitchen. Rest is more flexible. You can experiment with different ingredients. Does not mean you can do anything to the vada pav. Caching. Soap does not cash anything. Every time you make a request, it's like ordering from scratch. Even if you order the same dish again, it makes a fresh order for you. Now in REST, even though the Vada Pav girl does not remember your specific order history, it can still keep popular items ready to serve quickly. Security Soap has built-in security features, making it super safe but also complex. It uses WS security for enterprise level protection. REST, on the other hand, relies on transport layer security like SSL. Say like street food vendors does not have a security guard like fancy restaurant has. Messaging format, SOAP has a strict recipe book only using XML for its instructions. REST can use XML and JSON. It is very versatile. So basically, Vada Pav girl can use different ingredients for making an awesome Vada Pav. It was a fun example. In nutshell, SOAP is preferred for high-stake operations like financial transactions due to its predictability and security, while REST is great for everyday tasks like fetching users' data or posting updates on social media. Now let's talk about WESDEL and SOAP envelope. What's WESDEL? WESDEL stands for Web Service Description Language. It's like the detailed recipe needed in the fancy restaurant to prepare dishes because every dish has a specific way to be prepared. It's a XML-based language. What does WESDEL contain? SOAP needs WESDEL because it is structured and needs a clear definition of how the service works. On the other hand, for REST, Vada Pav girl's street food is flexible. She can quickly come up with different dishes without a detailed recipe book. So it does not need something like WESDEL. WESDEL contains the menu, which is the service offered, the recipe, that is the methods available, the ingredients, that is the parameter they can accept, the final dish, that is the response they return. It's like having a comprehensive guide to ensure every dish is made perfectly. And what is SOAP envelope? It is like the envelope of a letter. It has two main parts. First is header. This is like the instruction on the envelope. Make sure that the order goes to the right chef. It contains metadata 
such as authentication information, making sure the message is secure and reaches the right place. The body, this is like the actual order inside the envelope. It contains the actual message being sent. In SOAP, it is an overhead to have envelope, header, body apart from actual message, while rest is just the message making it lightweight. Let's understand in another fun way. There is data Kiko Sharma from Kapil Sharma Show. Then soap standards like the heavy attire he needs to wear in the show. So the final data to be sent becomes bulky while sending to the server. On the other hand, in rest, client can quickly send just the data. So it's lightweight. So Cloudy, what you think? Who is the winner? The winner is Vada Pau Girl. Exactly. Rest is more flexible, lightweight, and that's why used more often. I hope it clears the concept of rest and soap while having fun. Demo time. Now let's see how soap works with a practical example. So when we're talking about soap, vest gel comes in handy. So people are always confused that how soap and vest gel couple work together, as compared to when we are talking about rest. People are more clear that how exactly it works. So if we are talking about soap, it's a protocol. Protocol means it follows a set of rule. So you can't break the rule. Like okay, if this is the rule, you have to follow it anyhow. Whereas rest is an architecture, which is easier to follow, and you can have your own construction here. So that's how a basic difference between soap and rest works. Let's understand it in more detail. Now, what you see here is a soap message. Now, what exactly it means? Let's compare it with the actual envelope in a real life. So, see, the actual envelope looks like this, and this is the message inside it, right? The same way the soap message works. See, this is in the XML format. and that is the format in which it can be think of the envelope that inside the envelope the message has to be in a particular format that is the rule you cannot put in another format so now what it says see firstly we have the soap envelope that is the root element then we have the header now header is not compulsory it's man it's not mandatory it's optional it contains like security like authentication details and other things and then we have the body body is the actual message it contains the actual message so you think about the actual message right this is what the body contains and that's how the soap message works and when we are talking about the rest all we need to worry is about the message itself and that's why when we are talking about the rest we simply draw a diagram of a postcard saying okay we just need the message and that's how it becomes much simpler that you don't have the whole envelope which has the header and body but just the body which is sending the message and that's why rest becomes lightweight and also in the soap we have that xml format that is not necessary whereas when we are talking about rest okay yeah we can write in xml we can write in json so it becomes more easy and you know it becomes uh, more comfortable to it so that's the reason rest is more used than soap now let's play around with the soap api so if you type postman soap api you will be getting like make soap request with postman click here go down you get a link the collection of public soap apis so basically they are uh, free to use free to practice so these are the public soap apis so let's see how exactly they work so they, these are some of them which is given example by postman so let's click on numbers so it says number to words means if there is a number 3 numeric it will be converting it into words okay fine so i click here and once i click here you will see couple of things when we are talking about rest we have different methods right but in soap we have to use post only once we hit the url and make a send request so it has to be post after that this is the url and then 
when we are talking about the body here you see this is the body we have and we we are in the raw we have just talk about the soap message right so the same thing we have the envelope and then we have the body in the body what we are passing we are passing that okay uh, this number 500 that okay this is what we need to convert okay fine and now we want to send it so it says that you need to create a fork okay let's click on that we created it fork collection okay so we are here now after coming here again click on body you see everything click on header c text slash xml it has to be in xml format so what you noticed it has to be post it has to be in xml format and then we have the body which has the whole soap message which we know how it works and see here it is in xml format click on send and see status is 200 means everything is good and you get the response that okay 500 so that's exactly how it works now for example let's take another example list of contents my name okay let's click here again i click here i click on body i see that okay list of the content names okay and i click on send and see i get all the names here so these are the ones given by postman to play around with to understand basically how you make a request using soap api so this is how you do the communication back and forth that okay you say that okay you send the envelope with the body message header is optional like i said and then it gives you a response in this format again this is also xml which it is giving so that's how it works now that you have understand the soap message you would be thinking like where is the vestal stands for and where that comes into picture so here you see let's take an example of dneonline.com and this is for making calculations like add divide multiply subtract so let's take this example okay so see here we have service description let's click on this so here we have nothing but vestal file it is like a documentation documentation to do the interaction or communication basically it tells the functionality which it is offering which soap can read so let's see how exactly it works so we will be doing that for this in the salesforce itself so what we will do we will do save as and we will say calculator 1.xml and click on save so now it is saved now we are in salesforce now we will be going to class so now we have the class and we will be clicking on generate vestal and we are basically making a call out like is we are hitting right here we will be doing the choose file okay click on choose file and go to documents click on calculator 1.xml open and we will be seeing parse vestal so we get the an error that there are multiple bindings and that is not supported okay fine so let's see how we fix this error so let's open it so here we have our vestal in an xml format we will be doing binding so you see that binding is like calculator soap and we have binding which is calculator soap well so we have two bindings so we have to remove one of them so we will be simply removing the vestal binding this calculator soap this is what we need to remove and let's remove it quickly we need to remove this so 
so we have removed it successfully and at the top also we have soap 12 here we need to remove this also so let's remove that as well and click on save so now it should get saved now let's click on choose file click on calculator 1xml open and do parse and it is letting us do it successfully okay okay let's see calculator service and let's save it generate epic code so see let's click on generate epic code so now it has created a class calculator service okay fine now let's go to the developer console we are here so we have the code ready here now what exactly it is doing it is doing the calculation like all the addition subtraction multiplication device and how it is doing it so we got our class created so if you say open and we go to calculator service and click on open so see this class is being created see generated by western calculator service see calculator service and we have the method calculator soap sorry we sorry the inner class calculator soap so if we are seeing this so we have the calculator soap and inside that we have different methods like we have divide we have add we have multiplication we have subtraction so we have all of them right and let's see add for instance so you see it is doing the whole call out and let's see how exactly it works so here we are we have put two integers and then we are calling the methods so here we are calling add here we are calling subtract we are calling multiply we are calling divide and we are doing system dot debug to see what is the response we are getting so based on all the methods we have to pass the parameters and we will be getting response based on that so this is how exactly it works so this being generated by itself we just need to uh, like create an object of the class and then uh, based on that we have to call, use the methods now we have the open log and click on execute see we get an error unauthorized endpoint now why this error is coming because it is not whitelisted again either we will go with uh, remote uh, site settings or we will go into named credentials so let's go back let's go to remote site settings for now click on new remote site let's put it here and let's take the bs url put it here click on save so now we have whitelisted it okay ideally we should use named credentials but for this demo i have used the remote site we will discuss name credentials in another session and let's execute so see <clears throat> we will be click on debug only and see we will be getting all the response so see we have all the response that is we have passed integer 10 and 4 and it is doing addition subtraction multiplication divide now how it is doing by itself we didn't create a class we didn't create in inner class we didn't create in methods how it did it this is done because we had something called dnuonline.com which offered us the calculator web service so and in that web service it offered that okay you don't have to write the methods we will write it for you you just need to call us and we will do all the things for you but if you need to call us 
you can if you just call us directly by just hitting the url like we do in rest it won't work you have to have the whole vestal ready and this vestal what it contains is it contains all the information that is like okay uh, subtraction addition multiplication division all the information regarding the functionality right like a documentation which machine can read so it is having everything now you just have to generate the vestal and because of that your class is getting created and then you just need to call them and you will get the response simple right so that's where the vestal comes into the picture one of the interesting thing about vestal is like it's not necessary that you have to have the vestal but suppose it didn't had that functionality and you had to create by itself it would not it would be like completely hard right so vestal is like helps us in making communication with soap completely easily and that's why we do the generator vestal here we are doing the call out that is we are requesting information from external service so we are reaching out to them that is call out and that's exactly how soap works if you enjoyed this journey through rest and soap give it a thumbs up and subscribe to sfdc amplified channel can learning be more fun